Hey everyone, and welcome back to the job site here. If you're new to the channel, uh, you see here, what we've been doing on this build here is we've got our foundation dug out, we got our utilities installed, and our crawl space is ready here. We put our footers and forms in, got those poured, and our foundation is done here. Uh, next thing for this video is we're gonna be going ahead and installing our subfloor and uh, show you what we're doing to get that all ready. Uh, first things we're doing is taking these wood forms off the side there. Uh, we don't need that to hold the forms together anymore, so that'll be some extra wood. But take those off and then I'll show you the next step here. So let's get to work. So it took a little time, but went ahead and got those uh, wood forms taken out the outside, put those away. I came to the inside of the crawl space, kind of cleaned up some of the loose concrete and some bigger rocks. So uh, we're not having to crawl around on those later once the floor is there. But next step now, now we have all the forms off. This is our uh, sill seal. This is a uh, eight inch wide uh, foam. And we'll just uh, put this down, you see this. We'll just be going along and roll it out along our uh, foundation here. And we have our uh, mud cell, which is the uh, two by eight pressure treated wood. That'll go on top of that. And then that'll get bolted down to the foundation through these bolts here. But first things first, we'll go ahead with this uh, foam here and uh, get it rolled out. And it's nice doing this today because finally it's not a windy day. It always makes it so much easier. Uh, putting the stuff out when it's not windy. And getting this foam laid down. And since the uh, edge of our uh, mud cell, the board is going to go on top of this. This is going to be on the edge here. We're just going to line up the uh, edge of the foam with the edge of our uh, stem wall there as he's just pushing it through these bolts here that's nice easy but reason for doing putting this foam down is just to create a little little barrier between the uh, concrete and the uh, wood and if there's any kind of little little gaps between the wood and the concrete this will uh, fill that gap there and it kind of works as a nice little insulation between the between the uh, wood and the concrete and keeping any kind of like bugs and and stuff out from going underneath there so that's kind of the reason for doing this foam here all right, so a little change of plan here. See here, this is the uh, top plates that we're putting on here, or these bottom uh, mud cell plates. And these ones, uh, I guess I ordered uh, two by sixes and they should be two by eights. You can see here that if we did the two by six, then the bolt is gonna be right there in the very edge and it's not enough. So went ahead and ordered some new ones to exchange these ones. These will be here tomorrow. And these ones will come out to about right here. So that bolt will be uh, nice and centered. And that's gonna be a uh, nice, uh, wide width of board there to bolt down to the foundation. So a little change of plan from there, that'll be tomorrow. Today what we can get on though, is we took out our two by 12s and we're gonna start with this uh, center girder that's gonna hold up the, the house. So we'll put three in here. So it'll be three of them all uh, kind of sandwiched together. And we'll run the uh, girder down the middle there and we have these six by six posts. I'll show you all over there. These are the six by sixes. Those will go in the middle there. And I just have the uh, little laser again set up there on the corner with our uh, receiver over here. So that way we can make sure that this is gonna be a super flat floor here. Probably doesn't have to be so flat, but I have like to go be, do a little extra work and make them as flat as I can. So anyways, that's the plan for now. Go ahead and get our two by 12 set up and start building the center girder.
Yeah, here's a little close look at the progress we made so far. Uh, always getting that, that first piece up there is always the, the hardest, uh, just because it's all long and wobbly. But anyways, you can see here, we made some of these uh, temporary 2x4 supports. And we used the laser on top of that to make sure it's going to be the same level as the uh, plates on the end. So this thing is going to be nice and flat. And we put these temporary supports on the side just to keep the thing from wobbling back and forth. And we're, we're cutting these so none of the, uh, the joints are matching up. And then like this one, the joints that we do have here with two boards coming together, that's going to land directly on top of one of these 6x6 uh, six six supports. And um, yeah, we'll put this uh, third board on the, on the side there, bring it over, and we'll probably, we'll probably have those ones uh, match up here, just so there's not going to be two joints on uh, one 6x6 six six support. Uh, so we went ahead and put that, that uh, third uh, beam on there, that 2x12, and we just stuck it together temporarily with screws. That's just to stick it together, and we'll come back and we'll put... Uh, uh, a couple hundred nails probably in the whole thing of this to hold it together and so here we went ahead and started putting some of the uh, center uh, supports on here and these are just uh, six by sixes and that's making sure that it's directly over the joint there and down the center of that support and with these supports uh, you see here there's there's really nothing uh, on the ground like bolting them down to the concrete and right here we just don't don't need anything because these are being held down just with uh, friction. The weight of the house will be transferred down to the post and then down to the concrete, and this thing won't go anywhere. Uh, just kind of like temporary. We put we put screws in there, uh, in the top of this into our post there on both sides, just to keep it from going anywhere uh, while we're putting these posts in. Uh, but once we start building the house, the weight of this will hold us down and there's really no need for any kind of uh, supports like on the concrete like bolting it down uh, this is fine just being being right on the concrete there and the beam is being held down there so this one will fall out forward or backwards it won't go anywhere side to side it can't go anywhere so that's kind of a little detail on that one usually when I do these uh, floor videos like this I always get that question of what am I using to bolt these down and it's nothing it's just friction and gravity and that is working perfect around here there's nothing else that we need to do for that so we got three in and we've been using the uh, laser here on top just to make sure that our beams are nice and um, level and yep that's what we're doing so we're gonna go ahead put the rest of these Post in, get this supported, and I'll be back in a second. And yeah, here we go. See, we got all the supports done for our main girder going down there. Got the laser on top of there. Everything is completely level across the top there. And now we're just ready for the uh, the joists and our rim boards and the subfloor. And that truck finally showed up. Let me bring it around there. This is all the uh, subfloor. This is three quarter inch. Uh, tongue groove OSB and under there is the uh, rim board that goes with the eye joist and then they came with the uh, two by eights and exchanged those uh, for the, these bigger ones here so these are the sill plates that will go on top of the concrete and they'll get bolted down to the foundation and uh, let me bring up here to the driveway and show you those eye joists that showed up and here's all the eye joists so this is everything we're going to need to build our subfloor doesn't look like much, but they're all just nicely stacked together. These are a nine and a half inch eye joists. That's how thick they are, and then uh, how wide they are. And I think on top those are like inch and three quarters on top there. But that's those. Um, they're up here on the street because they're too big to go down the driveway. So we'll just have to bring them down there one by one, but we'll do that when it's time to use them. All right, so here we had, and we got our uh, so place down which is these pressure treated boards here. These are uh, two base we're using and we have them bolted down at least 72 inches and then on all the uh, the, the joints there we have every six inches between the joints Have that going all the way down there and getting these boards lined up. It's it's a pretty simple process to do 
we just uh, line our board up uh, in front of the bolts here and then just mark it with the square to show where the bolt is going to go and then we come on the outside we're real careful to make sure that the uh, ICF wall is the right measurements for the uh, floor to go onto. So we just measure from the outside of the wall uh, back to the bolt, and then we just transfer that measurement to the wood, which is back there, uh, like five five inches or so. Drill a hole, and then uh, do that 40 times, and bolt everything down. So that's looking good now. Things bolted down. Uh, next step to building the subfloor. Yeah, it's going up there to our pot of wood there. See up there, that is our rim boards. I'll show you those in a second. But get those rim boards down. Uh, we'll probably go ahead and go to this wall, this back wall. And we'll probably put our rim board along the side there. And then probably along the back there. Because our joists are going to be running from that side uh, this way. Running so this uh, girder is in the middle of those. So that's just the kind of plan for now. So we'll go ahead and get those rim boards put on. Uh, so we made pretty quick work of getting these rim boards on. Uh, it's kind of, things come in uh, 12 foot pieces so it, it goes up really quick and uh, they're nice and thick so they're easy to nail into. These are the uh, these rim boards come in 8 and an eighth inches and since we already know that our sides are, are um, the right links there. We just kind of line up our our uh, rim boards to the edges and then uh, toenailing uh, a nail uh, into the side and then if we need to adjust it back and forth we'll uh, just tap it with the hammer. So we got that done and we measured out one of the eye joists just to make sure that these things are actually going to fit in here get our dimensions right and these are going to be uh, 16 on center so if we're measuring from our edge there to the center is uh, 16 and then for the next one we'll just measure from here and then go out 16 and then make a mark so that's going to be just uh, 16 and go so mark 16 on the edge and then the, the uh, border will go on the edge of that one and these things are really nice here these joists here these are two inches wide so it's a really nice support for our subfloor that's going to go on there and it come out super straight uh, usually, if, if you watched uh, my past videos, you've seen that I usually use uh, two by eights for the uh, subfloor, and those are just fine. But since this house, this is a bit of a, a longer span than uh, what I normally do. Uh, that's just what the the plans show. This big span there, so I didn't just make that up. That's the engineer that drew up these plans. But that's a bigger span than two by eights uh, can handle. So I put these uh, eye joists on here, which are uh, I believe these are uh, nine and a half inch eye joists. And these are plenty strong enough to uh, do the span right here. And not going to sag in the middle or you're not going to have any bounces or anything like that. These are super strong. They're going to have a really nice nice floor here. And looking down there, they're super straight, super level. Really happy with this, how this is going. But anyways guys, I'm going to stop talking and just get back to cutting. And get some more of these joists up here. And uh, hopefully get the floor on here in a minute. And down here, uh, working on the subfloor here. Uh, we've just been doing our, our layout here. And what I'm doing is just 
hook onto the edge there. I'm lining up 16 on the center of this board, of this uh, joist here. And then to make it easy, I'm just hooking on to the edge of that one. So then going out every 16 inches, making a mark so I know that the edge of my joist is going to go on the edge of my mark. And that makes it really easy so I don't have to do math going backwards or anything. And then uh, when we're getting these, these joists nailed in here, they're right, really nice and simple. Uh, just nail on the top, nail on the bottom, and then going to the inside and putting a nail uh, from the bottom there into that uh, sill plate there. And these things are uh, locked down looking nice. And then we go ahead and we're doing the same thing on the other side. And then going to the middle and uh, putting a nail in, toenailing it uh, down into that center joist. And uh, yep, that's holding everything up. Looking real nice. Using these these uh, long eye joists here makes it a really simple and quick process to do. It's only been about 10 minutes when we have all these uh, these ones up here. And we've got these pre-cut ready. Showed you that process there. And next we move it onto these ones, which are a 28 foot span. Then we get to the small span there. And that's a, a smaller 20 foot span. So we'll go and get those put on and I'll be back here in a minute. So that's been a little time now. We ahead and got all these eye joists put in. Everything is nice length. We got to our back corner there. The house is perfectly square. Everything's lined up real nice. So that's gonna make it really uh, that much easier when we're putting this uh, subfloor down. Because when we have a square house, that stuff goes down really nice. And these eye joists, everything is perfectly flat the whole way across. Real happy with how this came out. Um, yeah, so up to that, I just showed you that on the drone. So we're going to go ahead now and get our subfloor put down. We're going to be putting it from this side and put it lengthways there. Going all that to our corner there. And we'll start coming across here. And I think once we get a little more over there, we'll stop and uh, we'll frame in the hatch to the crawl space. So we'll have a way to get under the floor for the uh, plumbing and electrical to be put in. But I think we're going to go ahead and get started on that. Uh, you can't feel the sun on the camera here, but the sun is actively trying to kill us today. So we're going to try to just get as much done as we can uh, before it gets too hot out here. So I'll maybe I'll try to set up another camera. Hopefully that thing doesn't get too too hot and turn off. But anyways, enough talking. Back to work. Let's go. All right, back here on the floor. It is coming along real nicely. Thought I stopped the time lapse. Come down here, give you a close up of what we're doing. Uh, it's pretty much just doing the same process over and over and over again, uh, about 33 times. I think that's how many sheets we have. But anyways, we're just going up here to this uh, these uh, floor joists here. 
and we're putting subfloor glue down just a nice little bead of glue on each one and we'll try not to go go too far uh, past the uh, the four feet there this just because it's uh, getting so hot already that uh, this glue is just drying within like a couple minutes so we're just putting on as much as we need we're putting the glue down and then sliding down the sheets of subfloor and I'll show you what these uh, gaps are uh, these gaps here so a lot of people think that you have to like put these gaps like real tight there uh, oh, no one fly here but these gaps here they only need to be about like an eighth of an inch or uh, probably just enough to like fit like a like a nickel into and that's the perfect size gap for here you don't want them close up just for like, expansion and contraction and things like that and then we'll go ahead and put in screws every six inches on the edges there and then in the middle we'll put them down uh, every uh, 12 inches there All right, and there we go. That last piece of subfloor we just put in, that was the final piece. And subfloor is in and done. Looking real nice here. So next thing we have to do, you see here that uh, we need to do some backfilling there. I have all the materials to start framing the walls here. That is on its way. Uh, but first thing before we do that, I always like to do the backfilling. So in the next episode, I'll be coming back with the uh, little excavator be taking all this dirt and backfilling against the uh, side of this foundation here and getting this done because it is it is no fun trying to frame a house uh, when there's a big four foot drop off the uh, off the side there that's never fun so that's gonna be it for the subfloor here real happy with how it turned out uh, you can't really see it here but out in the middle there there's a uh, a little two two foot by two foot hole there that we uh we cut and framed out and made a little crawl space uh, access there so once we have the uh, walls and roof on and everything's dried in we have the doors and windows in then the uh, plumber and electrician they'll come to do their part the uh, rough in work and they'll put the uh, the pipes and the electrical wires underneath the uh, foundation here into the walls and uh do their whole process there but that'll still be a few weeks from now uh next thing is just backfilling and uh lifting up the walls and doing the roof all right, everyone. Well, the subfloor is done here. Show you that whole process. So I think that's going to do it for this video. Um, everything is all complete. Next thing is we can come back and start doing the backfilling. And then I have the materials for the uh, walls and the roof. That's all coming. So that will be for another video. We're really looking forward to that. But for now, that's it. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching. And of course, if you like these kind of videos, be sure to subscribe because we have lots more videos coming. And we're going to be building this house start to finish. And I'll show you everything we're doing to finish this house. So again, thanks, and I'll see you next weekend.